Hello, my beauties. I am, the sun's kind of going down behind me. See that? You can kind of, so I know it's already, it's, it's uh, getting darker earlier here in California. So we'll, we'll see if we get to how long we can last out here. I just wanted to be outside as I got to drop into this conversation with you guys. So if you guys are popping on, please say hello to me. Tell me where you're at. Tell me if you can hear me okay. Um, I know it's always kind of last minute with I'm like, okay, time frame um, to be able to jump into this. And I, wow, I mean, so, so I'm just going to give a little bit of a context. Okay, we're talking about operating in divinity with your relationships versus out of domestication. And so for those of you who saw the live that I did the other day, and I referred to this again here in the Best Life Tribe and said, I'm going to be diving into this at another level, meaning another level of answering qu some questions that came up um, for some peeps here in the group on how to parent and how to set you know boundaries and how to actually you know um again with our conditioning it's like how to parent how to how to teach our kids that it's like it's our it, that that's our job um how to do that without conditioning so if you guys didn't get a chance to watch that live that i did in that training um please do so because that will make a lot more sense hello stephanie see gorgeous beautiful girl that uh, i think you were asking the question so it's perfect um, so, so please start there. Start um, with that training if you don't know what I'm talking about. Because really, in that I'm talking about domestific, domestication or domestification or, and self-domestication, right? And so how we get domesticated as a, as a society but from the time that we're little and then how we even start to self-domesticate. And then that's, of course, what we, we um, start to put onto our children and in other relationships. So I'm just going to sum up... Um, in um, well uh, first off I want to start somewhere else actually because you know today I even had a divine being um, a good friend come down from LA who he does miracle coaching and it's really you know a, a, um, aligns to a lot of the same things I do with um, super flow consciousness and flow consciousness and when you come from source code the source code that you are and you're back to the knowingness of who you are there is no tool or technique or anything to get to flow because you and the knowingness of who you are operate in flow and yet in our society we've always done this like um, we need this thing outside of ourselves and we're looking outside of ourselves and yet I just want to I want to start this this framework with remembering that the knowingness inside you already knows all this already knows um, how to operate in your divinity the the knowingness of who you are is can can decide to remember this because it's going to confront all the things that we're taught on or that we know it to be or the stories or the perceptions or the, the ideas or the timelines that that we've been we've we've thought and I, I mean <laughs> I've saw this for years come up for me um, in parenting is one of the greatest gifts of mastery um, because it, it allowed me getting conscious allowed me to question all my stories of why did I where did I even ever think that I was supposed to teach my children or show them a certain way, right? That would only be putting on them my ideals, my projections, and all those other things. And so the place that I want to start this from is to, you know, if you look at it and you, and you recognize the reason we're all striving to get to that remembrance and the knowingness of who we are and operating from our divinity, operating from a place where we experience heaven on earth and bliss consciousness, we're striving for that. And the reason we don't know it is because we domesticated. Okay, so the truth of who you are knows that code and knows how to operate in that way. But we got foggy and cloudy and we shut down um, and became dormant in our DNA and, our, and our, our ways of being to allow this to operate. So if you, if you start to understand it from this point <clears throat> that because you were domesticated, you're now seeking to get back to remembrance. So what if you had the greatest gift to be able to now allow your children to find that discovery of themselves or be in that divinity of themselves because we we stop the cycle you stop the cycle of domestication and conditioning and loving based on conditions so what we're really talking about is unconditional love this is what i referred to in that that live that i taught was that it's like everything we've done is out of conditioning and so then hence there is no unconditional love it's love with conditions so we're raising our children with conditions. If you dot, 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 then you get this. Then you're a good boy. Then you're a you know, good girl. Um, if you don't, you don't get my love. You don't get my approval. So notice the if and. 
and I want to I, I want to support as much as possible here so I want to give some context and understanding to allow you to not just hear the tool and then go okay I need to do this because it's it's when you understand why then the allowing the new tool to be utilized to operate in that way becomes so easy and effortless. So I love giving some context and understanding to see the big picture because that's really how I operate is seeing the whole big picture. So the first thing I want you to understand and look at is that your relationships or your children, if you have children um, and you're, you're tuning into this more for the parenting side, which is kind of where my focus is going based on some of the questions, is that your children are divine beings. Okay, so if you knew that every single person in your life was a divine being, you knew that your children were a divine being, then, and you saw them as a divine being who's already um, a genius, who actually chose in, and whether you believe, you, you know, you're aware of this or not, um, that them being in your experience and anyone being in your experience created a contract with you to be there for a spiritual law, a reason for you to have an experience with this person to learn something and to discover something to allow you to have all of the human experience. So, and most likely those people in your space, they've been with you several lifetimes and they've been different contracts for you as you are soul family and you're, you're there to um, learn and, and, and have this, this gift in front of you. So when I, I, I understand it and when I dropped the story, it was actually years ago when one of the first times I, I did medicine down in Columbia. I got the direct information from Aya that it was like, your children are not your children. They're not even yours. And I was like, wow, it's true. Like, and, and I, when I saw that understanding that they are these beautiful beings, I think that's when I probably really started to speak out and express that they're my growth partners. Because all of a sudden it was like, I'm not their mother that's here to teach them. I don't have to have to teach my kids or have to show them, you know, the way to go. <laughs> They're actually just here as beings in the contract with me of our growth process. And they are actually my teachers. They're just as much my teachers as I'm a teacher to them. We're just in the spirit experience to assist each other in our ascension. And so when you see all human beings as having the right and um, the and honoring them with the right to experience whatever they want to experience and having um, you know them being a genius even to see yourself in past times of consciousness or things that you used to do if you were like oh back then I blah 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 and you see it as a bad or a wrong or demeaning thing that's actually a, a um, uh, how do I, else do I say other than like it, it's still a low level of consciousness to even judge or shame yourself for a certain point of life or if someone else is experiencing something you used to do maybe when you didn't know as much to even think that you need to save them or show them again in that would be this idea that your way is the right way and that you they want what you want and this is where we surrendering all things and letting go of control just to simply know I, I get to choose what, what serves me and what's right for me and I honor you to choose what's right for you. So when you know that they're here on, on the journey with you and they're on their own journey and we try to restrict it, which is what I'm, I'm going to give you some feedback and, and insight around, but when we try to restrict it, when we try to restrict their journey, that is when we are um, actually becoming one of their greatest blocks because we are domesticating them or putting our projection or our label on them or, or um, you know, our ideals and our story or our timelines or what it should be. And we so unconsciously do this because we, we were raised that way and our society is seen as, as, as you gotta teach your kids this, you gotta teach them how to be a good person in society. And let's just look at stories for a minute, right? Like, um, remember hearing like, you gotta get good grades so you go to college so you can get a good job, right? How is now question if that's really true is that really true first off does everybody want a job and does that fulfill everybody and so it's like from the time where I mean I definitely wouldn't work for me to sit and, and do a, a work for someone else or do a job every single day and and to and I remember hearing that from the time I was little it's like you got to get good grades so you will be successful right so you'll be liked so you'll be loved so you can make enough money so blah 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 now Oh, there's this incredible video. I know I shared it a long time ago, um, where it was around like how we're like, oh, when I, you know, when I get done with school, then it's like, then you get done with school, and then it's like, then you're in your job, and then you got quotas to meet for your job, and then it's like, it just continues, and you actually end up not experiencing and living life because we're always seeking that thing that again, notice from the get-go, it's outside of us, right? So that we're looking for something outside of us. So when you just know like, this is my divine journey and I can now see my little growth partners, my div as divine beings who are here to choose their journey, 
then everyone has a right and every, everyone has the right to experience whatever they want. And everyone has that choice. And I know as parents, this can be where it, it can get a little bit confusing, which I want to give you guys more context to. But when we just go to the truth, the, the, the easiest thing for me is to always drop it back to the truth, right? Drop it back to the laws and the principles. So it's like, it, you might find yourself being like, well, I need to just, and I shared this story on the other live about, you know, the first time Skylar went to preschool and how he wanted to do his hair like Alpha Alpha. And my human brain almost went to tell him, no, you can't do that because you'll get teased. Because, and I caught myself being like, no, hmm. And I just caught it and was like, interesting, what's going on here? I'm afraid he'll be teased and he won't like school. He won't like to learn. He'll have a bad experience. I was like, interesting, that's all my shit. Because I'm afraid if he doesn't show up a certain way or because my experience was in my judgment on myself was if I don't show up a certain way, I'm not enough. I'm not loved. I'm not good enough. And when we, again, this is what I mean by we block their very journey is that when I think about um, Skylar and Gavin, right, from the time that they were little and I was, I was growing in my consciousness and I caught this. See, Sky was only four years old, five years old at that time when I first caught, I almost was going to domesticate him in how to look how to show up at school or how to be. And I caught it and realized that even if he did get teased and he hated school or that that was, that could be his most greatest growth process and journey that he was choosing in on to be able to find himself and discover himself. And so when I had caught this, I let my kids, I remember even at a young age, Gavin, when Gavin first was about to start, start like kindergarten or something small, um, and he would say to Skylar, he's like, tell me what to wear, tell me what to wear. And Skylar's, well, and, I would, and I'd pull Sky aside and I said, sweetie, remember, we're all perfect, right? So would you want your brother to feel like he has to wear something to be perfect? Or would you want him to know that whatever he chooses is perfect? And he's like, I want him to know whatever he chooses is perfect. I'm like, so you can reaffirm to him, what do you feel like wearing? Because whatever you choose, Gavin, is perfect. You are your own unique person. And so I, that was the message I gave my kids was, what is it? What would feel good to you? And so notice the curiosity. This is going to be one of your greatest tools. And this is obviously creation comes through curiosity moment by moment. When we're here present in this moment, again, we return to our knowingness. We're in this moment. It's like the curiosity allows us to go, oh, what would that be? What would feel good to me? What would I like? What would that look like? Not a, I have to dot, dot, dot to get to get or to not get. That's a story or a projection or that's a form of domestication. So even with my kids at a young age, when I was like, wear whatever you want to wear. And then I remember going to speak or do something and one of my friends watched them. And he, I remember getting the message. He's like, um, so they're kind of wearing like, a, like one of them's wearing like a soccer, like a soccer uniform sock up to his knee on one leg and then a, something else on the other leg. And one of them's wearing a cape and da, da, da. And they're like, and they said that you're okay with it? That you let them wear whatever they want to wear? And I was like, yep. Totally, let them go, they're good. They're totally, they're good to choose whatever they wanna wear. And our human brain can be like, think that we need to, tr to teach some form of domestication here. And so now, just to go off of that, because I taught Sky and Gavin from the time they were little, that they're, they're their own unique beings. Again, remember, comparison is the thief of all joy. There's no way any of us can, could compare each other, right? We're 37.2 trillion plus unique cells. We're our own unique fingerprint, um, voice box, you know, um, toe prints. We have all our own unique perceptions and experiences. There's no way we could ever be like each other. So then we drop into a society where everyone is supposed to be like each other and be domesticated and be in a, a, a parameter or a, um, you know in a box and um, being able to to tell my kids something different what they experienced because of that because they always showed up uniquely as themselves is they experienced a lot of bullies and I can now say having the years of experience over it I remember when I took my boys to Columbia with me both, both my boys actually got to to do uh, medicine with me down in Columbia and Skylar's intention was to fully love and embrace himself and fully express himself and when he came out of that experience he literally was like I do not care about bullies anymore like they have not had an effect on him since he literally and and his call to go to Utah to move to Utah which is one of the things that came up that I shared with you guys is me letting go of control of like what it has to look like to be a parent and knowing this divine being is feeling called to go somewhere to face what he's feeling called to seek and understand about himself. And, and now he's out there being an example of truth and not um, giving into living in certain parameters, or et cetera. How could I have ever 
taken that away from him. Do you see the long vision of it? Is that if I, from the time he was little, said, you need to dress this way, I would have just been the person, just like everybody else, saying, you're not enough unless you look this way, act this way, be this way. Conditional. Instead of being like, hey, I love, support, and accept you. Again, remember, the only job in relationship is love, support, and acceptance, is to hold a container, an open container, of, um, of being this love, support, and acceptance to allow them to get curious to discover where they wanna go and what they want to experience and saying, no matter what you choose, I'm here for you, I love, support, and accept you. And seeing this now, I mean, Skylar, um, so Skylar's living out in Utah now and um, he tells me everything and there's so many things his dad has no idea um, that he's experiencing with his friends, etc. And that's just because I don't have a judgment or story of who's good, bad, wrong, or right, what he could or couldn't be doing. In fact, he told me his, his friends will like, you know, put alcohol in their, their um, containers to drink at school. And I said, so have you gotten to try that? What's your, wh what did you experience with that? Do you have any questions about that? And he tells me all these things because we're just exploring and getting curious. To, for me to be a place of safety around that versus being like, he's hiding it, then he to get curious about it. And then he just, it's, it's like a form of manipulation when we try to control, which is what I want to dive into. But where I wanted to start with this and you understand is that the big picture of, of our children are actually our greatest teachers because you learn way more from your children than you ever could from your parents. And so knowing that they are divine beings that are divine souls in these little bodies, um, their ages have nothing to do with it. And if you can see them from that vantage point, say, okay, how do I be the space that they, I mean, for them to call you in as their parent, is a very sacred contract and to be this space for them and to hold this this container for them to then get curious and find who they are and what they want to be what's what's more important and that's what I caught myself when I was about to domesticate and say oh no you need to do your hair this way I was like whoa wait what's more important is that my child knows I love approve and accept of him no matter what and that I can be that example of he's getting to do that for himself so um, and I, when I asked Gavin, I, I'll share this. I wrote this down so I could be able to share this with you guys because I actually asked Gavin, hang on, I'll grab this. I asked Gavin, I said, sweetie, if I'm gonna share with some parents, thank you guys for the hearts. I said, if I'm gonna share with people, you know, what, what do you feel like is most important for adults? I said adults in general or parents to know. And he rambled off this big old long list, but I'll, I'll just tag point a couple where he said, listen, treat with respect don't tell them what they know or and what they what they know or don't know and what they did or didn't do treat as you treat others be open talk soft and get curious respond versus react and these are Gavin's word like in and they're very conscious because he understands this but he was telling me experiences that we talked about this with his teachers to where they'll say you did this and and again remember if you go through the epic relationships breakthrough coaching that I have um, goes really depth in depth into the principles of epic relationships and even the languaging every time you say you or or you made or them or they and you're pointing outside obviously you're projecting onto someone else and you're claiming to know what they thought or did and who they are etc and so as we got to talk about these things I felt like it's as important to share with you guys a little bit more context of understanding as to what happens when you first when you first are born what really happens what happens is you're you come here um, with the, the gift of discovery. Because the only reason you're here is to discover your divinity and fully express it. Again, we all have our journey of ascension, yet we all have our specific DNA codes and our shadows and the different things that we get to grow through that allow what you could call your mess to become your message, your core wounds to become your greatest core strengths, and those things to become the, the, the things that you share and evolve into your understanding. And it's, it's acceptance of allness. We, get, we return to allness with all people because again, there's acceptance of all things because we are human and human is to be all things. So just as much as I'm, I'm a bitch, I'm an angel. I am all things and I could never deny that. It's the craziness would be to deny that because that's, that's trying to run from or force or fight. So I'm giving you just mini context around this and that when you're born, you're just here to discover yourself. So I, I, I call it and I teach there's the four stages of life where there's first you're born and it's life is happening as you. You're literally crawling around, right, as a baby being like, oh, how do I use my fingers and what does it feel like to do this and how you're discovering how to use your body and you're, you're also discovering what do I like? Do I like to play with this? Do I like to play with that? Oh, no, I don't like that. Do I like this? And you're in discovery mode. Well, it's usually around age two or so, sometimes even before, where what happens is we shift into life happens to me. 
because all of a sudden what happens is this domestication. We start to become more aware of the domestication where it's like, you're going here, you have to wear this, you have to sit down, you have to act this way, you know, this is what it looks like in church, in a restaurant, or when you're around other people. And we begin that life happens to us and we feel more like a victim. And so moving from life happens to us, if we choose to become aware, which is usually as people again, now remember, and I said in the beginning, we're seeking that remembrance and that truth and that freedom and that flow and that just being of who we are because we got domesticated and forgot how we were there. You were there when you were born. It's just like, ooh, like it's just, it's just a discovery. And so then if we choose to become aware and those who choose to step into consciousness, which all of you guys obviously are doing it on the path to that, is all of a sudden we realize, no, ha, 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 life happens for me or from me. I'm the one who contracted that, attracted that, created that. I spoke that, I thought that, I perceived that, I feel that. And I, the principles and the laws, received it, that I did it. So, and, and it happens, and if even the things that you're like, no, 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 I didn't attract that, I didn't want that, etc. well, we know vibrationally and even uh, perception-wise, or even if you're not aware of it unconsciously, how you chose and called that in for your greatest, highest good. So you did do it for you. That's why everything happens for you. And the basic law and principle I would love you to always remember is that there is no such fucking thing as mistakes. You can never have made a mistake and you never will make a mistake. Everything in front of you is perfect. You will always choose the right path. You will always go the right way because it's there attracting you and pulling you for a reason. It's spiritual law to come up to allow you to heal what's still there and see what's still there to only have greater. So everything you're choosing only allows you greater. So there is no such thing as mistake. So if there's no such thing as mistake, then we know everything happens for us. Now, most people will stop at this level of consciousness. It's just like, cool, I'm a creator not realizing that there's a whole nother level of our interdependence with the multiverse, which is life happens through me. And this is what I mean by just this knowingness. When I just set up with an intention and knowingness, it can flow through me to guide and direct me to exactly what else I wouldn't have seen. And so that's that, that um, allowance versus when we're trying to control. And so think of it as a, a perfect, beautiful um, uh, formula of divine will and, or, you know, uh, of like, yeah, divine will and surrender. So it's like intention with surrender, right? If everything is intentional, I'm a vibrational intentional being to, to live in um, love and acceptance and abundance and I'm intentional, everything flows directly to me to allow that intention, yet I get to surrender versus trying the human self be like, okay, I'm gonna, I want that, so I have to, it has to be this way and I'm gonna control it. And it's the same thing with parenting, guys. So please pop up if you have questions along the way with this. But I just want you to hear and understand that that's why we went through, we, we start in discovery and we start to block it off. And the whole point is that we're returning to discovery. The other thing that happens to us because we go into this domestication, which is like, again, putting our ideals and our stories and, and our projections onto a child or, or that we got put onto us, is that when we, I always, I call this the other thing of finding your, your, your zone of genius. You start off in your zone of incompetence. Say for instance, like, you know, maybe something like bagging groceries, pretty much anybody could do it. It's not, it doesn't take that much competence, right? How did this work with values and truths? Awesome, Stephanie. <clears throat> Tell me a little bit more of what you're asking specifically there. Um, and I think I know what you mean, but I want to, I want to get a little bit more clear and I'm going to go into a little bit of like how to's with children, etc. But I want you to hear, and I want you to hear that like, so if in, um, your zone of incompetence, say that you're just like, cool, I can, you doing something that doesn't necessarily take competence, right? So it could be bagging groceries. Then as you uh, have more discovery of yourself, you, you start to get guided to like maybe something that's your zone of competence, something that is like takes a little bit of skill set or a little bit of training or information for you to do. It's a little bit of a competence to do it. Um, if my daughter takes something that doesn't belong to her, okay, cool, awesome, I'll, ju I'll jump back to that, remind me. Um, then if we start to understand ourselves more, we start to do something that would be our excellence. Now, most people, again, get stuck here because zone of excellence feels comfortable. It feels like it's something you control. It's something you most likely get paid well to do. Um, it's something that you know, you're really good at, yet it doesn't really absolutely fulfill you and it doesn't feel free. So people stop at what they have to do or instead of allowing this greater zone to come through, which is your zone of genius, allowing the flow of something more to come through. And the only reason I'm sharing these with you guys is because um, when, we, when, when we domesticate, we shut this down. We don't allow the discovery process. Now, 
Stephanie, say that your daughter takes something that doesn't belong to her. She's just in discovery, right? Now, if you say, you did that, you're bad, we've domesticated. We've said that instead of, think about it, it's like, just like there's so many rules around, um, uh, you know, sexual teachings with children, right? It's like um, to avoid their private parts or uh, talking about them. You don't say that word. Well, what are you teaching them? If, you, if, they're, if you're, you're teaching them, I don't even talk about a part of my body and say that, then aren't we already putting on a frequency of that it's bad and wrong and I should avoid this or I don't have any feeling with this or have any connection to this versus like, yes, that's your penis, that's your vagina, this is what that is for. So we're going back to just information versus having a, if you did that, you're bad and wrong. So it's like, what, you know, asking curiosity questions. Okay, sweetie, what, you know, what made you want that? You know, what, what is it that you're seeking? What, what do you, oh, I, I really wanna have that too. Okay, I can understand that. And it's realizing that it's just curiosity that your child is wanting to do it. But when we start to go, okay, so if we have something and, and it disappears, how would you feel? How do you feel if something that you have disappears? So, it, and, and it's, you're just sharing um, information without a projection or story around it. So it's like, if you, would you feel this way? Do you feel that way? Yeah, you could feel that way. So if this is someone else's and it disappears, how could they maybe feel, right? So what, what would we get to, if you're really seeking that, how would we get to um, have, create that we, what would be a way that you could do that? And see, everything is just curiosity for the child to discover for themselves. So I'll give you some, um, um, uh, uh, if, uh, some I guess context around like you know maybe some ideas of, of even when I raise my boys and so it's like again if I create a container of love support and acceptance and it's just curiosity I'm saying like this space you're free to discover they never know what it feels like if they don't try something right see so when we when we as parents go it should be perfect and we're pretending to be perfect and we're pretending they should only do certain things that are perfect we have a story we have a story grid. I'm so glad you get that, Stephanie. It's like she's just a little kid being like, what does this feel like? What is this? What is that? It's just like I say how I was, you know, contracted. What is what is a ultimate forgiveness feel like and look like? Why do you think I contracted my former to ha be, have an experience of being cheated on? And yet I spoke that out. I looked for it. I attracted. I did all that so that I could experience that and know what that felt like. Now, if I had a story that cheating was bad and wrong, I would still be shaming, blaming, blocked from the the freedom and the gift and evolution it gave me and it gave him. But he just, he just was, it, that was part of his perfect process, right? So see, nothing is bad or wrong, nothing. So here's a, this is where you catch yourself on going, if you, if you catch yourself going, what are you trying to control? What are your stories? This is where it will bring this up for you. So I wanna try to, to give all this to you in that when you are allowing curiosity, like you're allowing curiosity for your child, what you're giving them is you're giving them the opportunity to discover themselves. You're giving them the opportunity to trust themselves, to know themselves, to return to themselves and notice this is what we're all seeking. You know how many people I work with for so many years where they don't know who they are. They don't know what they like. They have no idea because they've never given themselves permission to discover who they are, what they enjoy. And it's always gonna keep growing and evolving and changing. Just like what the things that I'm teaching now are so far beyond what I understood years ago. And I wouldn't have a passion to just keep teaching the same inkling that I understood years ago because I have freedom to understand so much more, which I wanna share with you too, because I continue. And so when we're, when we're uh, you know, think about how the whole point of what we're getting back to is is trusting ourselves. So many of us don't trust ourselves because we're looking for permission outside of ourselves. Where do you think that came from? It came from domestication. Then we became self-domesticated. We're like, well, wait, I don't want to. Why? Because I'm afraid I'm gonna be rejected. I'm afraid I'm gonna be judged. I'm afraid I'm gonna be seen. I'm afraid I'm gonna be heard. Because all the things you were taught were sit down, be in the box and do it this way. So now we get a question and look at like, what we really want for them is we want them to discover themselves. And so and when I think about my boys, we're just on this life adventure together. We're just on an adventure together and an ascension adventure together. And so this is the biggest thing you can bring it back to is that whenever you catch yourself trying to control anything, I always remind myself and I say, ah, control is trying to control me. Okay, so, and think about it. Control is a form of manipulation. So if you wanna control your child to wear a certain thing, to do a certain thing, to be a certain way, etc., you're actually just in manipulation. And something I studied, I studied under uh, an expert years ago in parenting 
um, when my kids were small and I was so curious to like learn how to consciously um, shift things because I was seeing my own my same programming coming out and I remember at first before I, I learned a different way I used to when they did something like they fought or they hit or da 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 I was like we I sent them in the corner and I remember Sky had to like sit in the corner and have his head in the corner and it's like for so long you know they just hate it and it absolutely sucks and here it's like we're being taught like oh they'll hate that and then they'll not want to do the thing again again this is just like us putting on a punishment saying you're bad or you're wrong now what I learned from this, this expert was that the whole it doesn't work the whole entire time and what I noticed is the same things kept happening it was just what happens is they're in the corner pissed off that they're in the corner and all they're thinking is how do they actually do it without getting caught next time because again they didn't learn a solution they didn't learn how to communicate they did so if they're hitting they didn't learn how to go oh wait you know what does that feel like how would I feel with that like what am I actually wanting how would I actually get that we don't teach them solutions we're just putting on them our forced solution so it's like corner right like that and I and when I understood this I was like oh my gosh like I'm not teaching him solutions I'm just actually manipulating him and he's just learning standing in the corner trying to figure out how to ma manipulate situations and how to hide from things so that it, it it becomes an outcome that he thinks he's he's seeking so when you realize that you know when we let go of control control is always controlling us and so you know um, like I said from the from the time they were little of what they wear to what the, you know how their hair was and I realized I think I shared this on the live the other day of how even being a nutrition fitness expert years ago and this might be something like you, you're talking about Stephanie with like setting boundaries right it's like it used to be okay cool we sit down and we always eat a vegetable and you know a protein and you have your carb and I would teach my kids you know like this is how your body works this is what your body requires to be healthy so you give them information and you're like and and you you get to choose like so I mean it used to be that we'd go out to eat and I would say cool as, as long as you you know you you feed your body some healthy food you have a choice you want to have a dessert you know if it was somewhere we we're at or a party and I, I noticed how I got to give them power of choice that if we were somewhere and people offered them something I'm like it's your choice it's your body how you get to choose how you want to feel but the difference is going if you eat that you'll be sick you'll be fat you'll be any of the, the the shitty things that we would say that then just program them to say oh you're not gonna be happy with me if I do that or I'm gonna it, it also creates a, a, a construct in their mind of, of a story right and a program and so you know um, I saw even how even in some form how trying to have only healthy food in the house how you know my boys would want because they had a totally different experience with their dad how they would want other things right and and by saying when we go I'm like cool you get a choice you can you get to choose and you get to choose how you feel so when I even realized I had to let go of like my idea was like of course I wanted to you know in a way make them eat healthy so they be healthy I realized like wait a minute that's actually whatever their journey is their journey is and I know that can be a challenge to, to take in and swallow as a parent to be like well, wait because then you're like, well, then I pay the medical bills and da 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 da. So if, if it's it's to give them information, say what you get to understand is is you get to understand about sugar and you get to understand about things in foods and how it can make you feel, and you're you know you're in choice of how you want to feel. So this is why I choose this. I choose to eat healthy because I want to feel good. What do you want to feel? And it it's a you choose and you get to support, love, and accept them to have their journey and their experience so I think Stephanie you would ask something around like how do you set boundaries like getting your kids to bed at a certain time or and every time my kids um, you know um, I'll, I'll give you an example like one of the the things that I think I, I taught in some of the communication stuff with even children is is how um, I remember one of the times when I like the, the old me would would start to feel triggered and I like out of nowhere bitch mom could come out meaning I'd raise my voice and, and you know you're like you don't feel good doing that that's not really the relationship that you want and I remember noticing now so now I noticed it was like I noticed that bitch mom wanted to come out and and I'd, I'd, I'd go ooh, what's it's so five steps right guys like it's the five steps that I always use and I always teach these came from these came through me through my own experience to understand how to stop trying to project in the future or the past or stop operating unconsciously and how to be and operate consciously again how to respond versus react unconsciously and I was like wait what am I feeling and it's like oh like I remember my kids asking them a couple times hey can you guys pick up da, 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 da. and then 
y you guys might have experienced this person asking again and asking again. Then what happens? Bitch mom would want to come out. So I, I recognize like, what am I feeling? I'm feeling ignored. I'm feeling disrespected. I'm like, why? Why is that? And, and I recognize that I had a story there because from the time I was little, again, I was suppressed from expression. I couldn't speak up or have a voice. So it was like, there was that rebel part of me that was like, don't fucking shut me down. Like, don't not listen to me. It made me feel disrespected because as a, as a child, you always had to listen to the adult. You always had to do what the adult said or you were going to get it. We like, we got spanked. We had like very, you know, it was, it was extremely strict um, you know, way of being raised. And so all of a sudden I realized that here I had this idea that they didn't listen to me and I was being disrespected because they weren't listening to what I said. Now, did I want to be the, the, the same old program and the parenting that I had and force my children to do something or not have a, a good relationship? So I'm like, why is that? Oh, it's a story for me that if they're not responding a certain way, then I'm being disrespected. What do I really want? Remember step three, what do I really want? I want to be heard. I want to have a great relationship with my kids and whatever my intention is. If I had an intention of like us wanting to go somewhere, so it's like I asked them to maybe, you know, clean up their toys so that we could leave, then, then it's like, hey, so how do I communicate the information without a, a conditioning program around it is I'd get on their level and I'm like, hey guys, I notice I'm feeling sad. I'm feeling sad because, uh, because I feel ignored. And what I want is, is when I, I notice that when I, when I say, you know, hey, I asked to do something and it doesn't happen, then I felt like I was being ignored. What I really want is I just want to feel heard. What, you know, my intention is, is, is to do this and we get to go do this. What do you guys want? And so again, choice. It's like, well, these are our options. We can go play if we get the, when we get the living room cleaned up, or if we choose to not do that, we can stay here. And so I'd give my kids choices. And I'd always put it back onto like what, you know, whatever they choose, they see choice always creates something else, right? It's like, so they knew if they chose something, they were going to get a certain byproduct of it. So if you're, if your child, if you say, Hey, this is, we get to, you know, let's, let's, we all get to get our sleep because sleep is what helps us feel good in the day and has energy. And you as a mom, you're like, I'm worthy of getting my sleep too. So, you know, we're, we're all get to go to bed at this time. So we can all go to bed and we can all get some sleep and we can all have our own time. Now, if the child chooses to stay up and says, you know, I'm going to, I'm choosing to play. Now you can decide on, did I have a story around what it should look like for them? Or, I mean, I used to come out and find Skylar was like asleep finally on like in the living room. Like he would get up and he just had a brain that would do that. And I was like, he finally went to sleep when he wanted to go to sleep. And see, now notice if they're getting older, it's like they'll have an experience of they might be tired. And then it's just again, the curiosity. Well, what would you like to feel? Would you like to feel more rested? Cool. Well, then how could we support you with that? So when it becomes, you allow them to like, you're setting a framework of being like, you know, this is how I support you. In, and I know it can in, be, you know, like a fine line with, with like, how do I parent and support them to be safe? But also knowing it's just like, if our story was like, oh, they're safe if they dress a certain way and act a certain way, that's just a story. Okay. So it's like when, when, um, I used to walk outside with them to cross the street, I just say, oh, good thing. We're always safe. We always look both ways versus saying, if you cross the street, if, if you, you know, um, if you talk to a stranger, you're, you know, that's bad or wrong. Like, right. Like you see the difference between like, just saying like, we always, we, we're always this and we're just, this is the information we get to look around us. We see all the cars. So how can we be safe? And we're not saying if you do this, you get that. If you don't do that, you get that. Or you don't get that. Do you see what I mean? So it's just sharing this information. It's me. I need my alone time. Awesome. They can really go to bed when they're awesome. Same thing, babes. Like there's the other day, so Gavin was packing, because Gavin's going to be going to Utah, and, and he packed up stuff, or put piles, and I said, babes, what I would really love is I'd love if you can go through those piles and get them organized, so then Jackie, my, my nanny and house manager, can assist you in putting these together, and he was like, no, I don't want to do it that way, because I want to do this, and in that conversation, right, I realized, I'm like, my only intention is the support you love. I'm like, I want to maximize Jackie's time, your time, you to be supported. I'm like, so that's my thought of how it can be the most effective. And he's like, well, this is how I want to do it because of this. And I'm like, sweetie, if that's the way that you want to do it, it this is my, as long as it gets done, you're in charge. And he was like, okay. And, and if I, and I recognize that's a different me than that would have been like, no, you need to do it this way. So we save your time and Jackie's time and da, da, da. And when he actually explained it, I, I, I heard what he was perceiving and how he thought it was best. And again, this is a discovery process, how he organizes, how he likes to do things. And so I'm like, sweetie, you know what? I don't care how you do it. I don't care how you do it. I'm like, 
as long as you're doing it and you're in charge of that, awesome. So see if you're like, hey, this is, this is the end result. So the end result might be, okay, guys, at 8 o'clock, mommy gets her alone time. And so, you know, and, and so, you know, as long as teeth are brushed and you're in bed and you get to go to sleep, mommy's door is going to be closed and I get to have my alone time. Or that we get to have, like, the, 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 the getting quiet time, right? But it's not like, if you don't do this, I don't approve of you. I don't, you know, it, it comes with any, you're not enoughness. If you don't listen to what I say or do it the way that I want to do it. And that's where we, it really is, Stephanie, you said it so perfectly because what's, what you're really talking about is it's really always our own shit. And now can you see why your growth partners are your greatest little reflections? They're a reflection of your programming. They're a reflection of how your stories, your ideas, and when I, when, like, again, each little one that I caught, just like I caught the, the feeling disrespected, it was like, oh, oh, that's why bitch mom would want to come out, right? Oh, that had nothing to do with them. And then I'd look at them and go, ooh, if I was feeling little, you know, had some story about time and I had something to accomplish in my business and I started like trying to get that done and the kids started making noise, all of a sudden I started feeling myself like this and it had nothing to do with them. It was my own internal shit that's like, oh, I feel overwhelmed and I want to get this done. So again, calming down. And this is where you're going to practice not reacting, but getting calm. Just like Gavin said, get calm, get soft and get curious. Get curious about it. When I get curious, I'm like, oh, what I'm seeking is a little bit more support for my headspace. So I'd, I'd go to my kids, I'd say, hey, hey, babes, hey, I'm intending to get some, uh, you know, some more things done. And I just notice like I, all the noise is a little distracting for me. Could you guys either go outside or could you go downstairs? Can you support me and could you do that for me right now? Yeah, mom, we can. See, so I just make a request, a clear request of what I'm seeking and, and give direction to that. But there's no... Um, there, we just, we take out all the drama and all the bullshit really. And, and so when, when we noticed, when we noticed that it's our own shit, it's our own story. So that's where you get to go away or what, what are my stories or what am I trying to control? That's really the easiest question. What am I trying to control? If you're trying to control something, you're feeling resistance around something. Remember, it's only resistance energy. It doesn't work until you like you get curious about it. Is it to allow you to find a different solution? So when I first, I think I've shared this before in some coaching, but when I, um, I remember thinking, I used to think that mornings and breakfast were just pure hell. Because I remember like I'd, I'd get up early so I could get my workout in, so I could wake up my boys. And then it was just like between like kind of the like, okay, did you get dressed yet? Okay, awesome. Okay, hurry and get dressed. Okay, did you get, okay, hurry and get dressed. Just to get them out to the kitchen to then to get them to eat food. And then like be getting them out the door. And I realized, of course, breakfast was hell. Because I was first off speaking it. I was perceiving it that way. I had that feeling and energy. I'm reconnected. I was waiting. <laughs> so trying to reconnect. I knew it would work. Perfect. So when I... Hmm, I might get to go inside. Um, when I noticed that my energy around it was all creating that, I was like, whoa, wait a minute. No wonder this is reflecting perfectly what I, what, the, the way that I was choosing to experience it. And so if I'm just like, what do I really want? I want, I want it to be easy. I want it to be flow. I want to have wake up and like teach my kids like empowerment, how to have a great day, right? Like, cool, what do we want to create today? And so we started getting curious, like how else can we have a, an easier morning? So we started to get up half an hour earlier. So there's just more time and space for that. We started setting out clothes by their beds in, in the night before. We even set out the, the breakfast placemats and their, 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 their dishes for breakfast in the morning. We pre-packed most of their lunch. So it was just like we kept, and each one of these things we kept figuring out to make it easier and easier and easier. And that literally just became like, it was like, cool, you guys got plenty of time. Awesome, your clothes are right there, cool. You guys focus on that and I'm gonna go do this. And I'll meet you out in the kitchen and we'd find fun ways to be like, we'd have a little timer where we like flip the timer and be like, cool, we gonna, let's see if we can beat the timer and I'll meet you out in the kitchen within five minutes. So it just becomes, I'm just here in, as a part of their experience for them to discover the fun ways they get to get dressed and the, the things that they love to do and how they love to express themselves. And what I was saying earlier around the expression piece or the discovery pieces. Now I see how I'll share with you one more story of how I, and this was just like two years ago, guys, when I realized I was at a conference I got invited to um, called Archangels, where it's like a lot of high level influencers are really come together to be angels, to teach certain things. And, and, um, I remember uh, a good friend of mine sharing how his son wanted to be a video gamer and how he, you know, he grew up with his dreams squashed because parents are like, this is what it should look like and what you have to do and what is acceptable. And, and so his son wanted to be a gamer and he was like, how could he support that? And I, I got bitch slapped because I was like, oh my gosh, hi Polly babes. For years, 
Skylar, I knew I resisted them doing video games because I'd seen, you know, their experience, their dad's experience with video games and just kind of like wanting to play video games all the time. I remember my brother really struggling with video games growing up where he never went to school and my mom would like have to go find him and he was at the video game place. And so I had these negative associations to someone playing video games. Now you look at our society today and where like kids are able to like what Gavin's able to do where he is so expressive. He's, he's been inside today filming like, you know, all these clips of him like doing fun little things. He found this expressive nature and and realizing that when at that point in um, I, I, I again was open to cool what do you want to experience was like alright and I, I set a parameter for them like okay you get like 30 minutes a day to do that kind of a stuff and I remember one time having a conversation with Sky where he said he said every time I'm, I'm on YouTube all of a sudden I feel like I'm in this invisible bubble that is like ideas and all of a sudden I get all these ideas and I'm seeing these things and it's popping up and it's giving me like all these things are coming up and I was like wow I didn't understand before that that was his experience with it because that wasn't my association to it and so when I went to this conference and I really like back I heard him say how he was doing everything he could to support his child's dream I realized I had been squashing my child's dream I had been squashing Skylar's dream just because I knew every time he told me about some sort of game I was like mm-hmm mm -hmm. I was trying to be like like positive but my frequency is like I don't want you to do with video games and he and after we had this conversation he told me that he's like yeah I totally recognize how I'd, I'd share something with you that I was excited about and you're like mm-hmm and didn't want to know more didn't want anything to do with it so I came home from that conference and I was like Skylar I realized babes I have not been supporting your dream I was like and, and I explained why because I had these associations I was afraid that you'd just end up playing video games and you know not really have a life and that's just my story and I know you can do with it and be with it whatever you want how do I support you in that Bali Bali girl come here baby she's hearing stuff so um so then it was like how do I support you in that we ended up he ended up getting into music and became like we did his first DJ event to earn money for his gaming computer he started to explore with it and express with it they started making videos and he started doing all these things from that even Gavin now has his own YouTube channel where he does like he's just this big source of expression and for other kids he's like every time he's been with his friends he's taught them how to like be themselves or, or like f do these fun things and just create these things and I'm like wow would my kids have ever discovered that discovered what they love if I didn't allow that discovery and I almost squashed it and believe me I've done the j I'm, I've, I'm still doing it I'm still always growing and expanding um, yes so Stephanie you're saying you're allowing them to experience and prov providing the information to support them in their experience exactly exactly so how do we um, you know when we when we catch our what we're trying to control and notice if there's a story around it. oh you have to get good grades to go to college to get a good job it's like oh, wait is that really true that certainly didn't apply to me here and and instead what would draw to what what how would I let go of that story or that perception or that projection or see that the ideal exists and so the other thing that you get to do is notice if you're using the word if if you do dot 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 then dot 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 that's one of the greatest ways to catch ourselves in conditioning and realize that wait no I'm just gonna share information right I'm just gonna share this is what's there for me this is you know what our opportunities are or or this is what this thing is about and asking the question so my my one of my personal clients when I got to spend a couple days Gavin and I actually were in New York with him and his family we did like family VIP day it was the coolest thing ever because Gavin was actually teaching his kids and they were asking him questions and I remember my client saying to me, he's like, I've been waiting. So his kids were like six and six and four. And he's like, I've been waiting to share certain things with them because I didn't feel like I could consciously share those things or they'd get it. And then he's like, I realize you say everything to your kids and my kids. You talk about all of it. You talk about them being in power with what they, they think is what they're going to experience to, you know, whatever they're feeling in their body is what is, what is that about? What are you afraid of? What could that be? If you want to feel safe, what would that look like? And he's like, you just ask them questions. You just get curious with them and you talk to them at their level and allow them to, to be the guide. And I'm like, exactly. That's why it's, it doesn't have to be this game or this story of what we've created of we need to teach our children or put onto them to be how to be a person in society. You just get to be in the experience with them and allow them to be guided and trust that journey for them as well. Um, I'm, I'm, I wanted to tune into if there's anything else I definitely wanted to. And please, guys, if there's any other questions that are coming up, um, other than, um, oh, this is the other thing, I, and I think I mentioned this before, is like not claiming, like it, it, a lot of times, and this is a, a conscious shift, is to not ever claim what's inside someone else or what they meant or what they thought or what they did. 
You can always only, and again, this is an epic relationship too, but you can always only claim what's inside you. Well, like I thought this because I saw that and I felt this. I can only claim for me. I can never say, well, you did that. Instead, I can say, I noticed I felt this way. And this is what's there for me and help me understand what's there for you. So with your kids, like what are you seeking? What do you really want? How would that look for you? If your, your daughter takes something of somebody else, it's like how did that make you feel? And you got to play with it, great. Now how would it feel this way? And we're just getting curious about all things and being like what kind of experience do we want? And when they get to experience those things, that is their perfect growth process at every age that they're calling in what they're calling in. Um, and how much more you can support them to drop the stories and the have to's and the shoulds around it. So I'll share, I wanna find um, the actual Gavin's list. Let me see if I can find this because um, I mentioned to you guys how he just rambled off a bunch of things and he was like, he experiences this all the time with even his teachers. And, um, and he said, you know, sometimes a lot with his, his family um, that's in uh, in Utah and this is where it gave him context and these were these were the things I kind of summed up a few but he said listen so now thinking about everything that we did okay and I and so you guys know um, I'm practicing I actually had one of my my personal clients today she knows um, that like Gavin is moving to Utah in a week Skylar just moved six months ago and human story would have been like oh my kids don't love being with me or I'm not a good mom or you know I provided them with an epic beautiful house the magical manifestation mansion we travel all over the world you know and and we have the most epic amazing relationship and so again when I just know they're a divine being they're feeling called and so if you you haven't heard me share this it was it was you know a little bit before six months ago when I was on a date night with Skylar and see he had gone down to the jungle and decided he was gonna fully express himself and then when I was on a date night with him, he said, Mom, I noticed something. He's like, I noticed that when I want to go put something on my YouTube channel, that now I notice I'm worried that Dad's going to hear it or my other family and they're going to they're gonna have judgments or, and then I don't want to do it. And I pull back and I hold myself back. And again, now he's committed to fully expressing himself. And he was like, I really feel like I get to go live there and I get to stand in who I am and experience these things with with that religion in that space and and discover what's right for me and choose what's right for me so that I can be free to express myself because otherwise I feel like I'm afraid I'm just gonna hold back because I'm worried about what they're gonna think it was like this divine being in a 13 year old body you know that was saying and how could I do anything but honor that he feels called to do that and no I mean look at the journey he's choosing he's choosing to go back to public school you know, to be in a really strict religion environment, you know, um, a totally different parameter, a, like victim consciousness kind of housing and just a, a different experience and, and walk away from everything he has here because he feels called to understand though, you know, even understand what it's like to live in that way and just all these things. And I can tell you by letting go of control, again, I thought I was like, babes, I can only honor you. Um, and when I last was in Utah, the lessons that he's learning from being in that environment, I could have never given him. It's like, I was in a way before trying to protect him, right? By teaching him empowerment, teaching him consciousness and having this environment like we love and accept you no matter what. And we're like on this process with you and for him to go choose into that, he's learning things about that environment that I could have never given him. So, and that's allowing him to be who he is. And that's again, his other, his next level of learning to fully express and fully own and, and accept who he is, trusting himself. So the moment, because I'm in this place, the moment Gavin was like seeing that, obviously Gavin and Skyler, miss each other a ton they're super close and and he was like is there things for me to learn there I want to understand what what Skylar's growing in and how to be that too or how to you know what I'm gonna get from that and the moment I knew that he had a draw to it I was I mean the old me would have been like oh no no you're only 11 you know like I, and it would have just scared the crap out of me it would have been like everything in me would have wanted to 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 control that or be like oh when you're older and I was like sweetie you know what if you feel called to that I'm only here to support you and um, and so that's why now we, we were, were allowing Gavin at 11 years old. And now for me, I'm like, I'm interested to see what comes up for me of how to be a mom in a different way. And my client today was messaging me. She's like, I just, she's like, I just, I'm so honored and blessed to see your example that you're doing, you're actually living the principles you're telling us. You're letting go of control. You're completely surrendering. And guys, my theme right now that I'm, I'm getting clear on is simplicity. Because even where I was like, both my kids are gonna be gone, I'm gonna let my magical manifestation house go. Because again, there's no attachment to identity or things. And instead, I'm like, what would what what else is there for me to feel called to? And I'm like feeling called to just travel all over the world 
one to two months at a time. And it's like something about it is like I'm being pulled to be wherever I get to be in the world to assist the influence and the shift of humanity. And it's like, and all of it's perfect. And now I get to build a, a, an epic relationship continually with my kids in another way. But if I had a story that being a mom had to look a certain way. Now, years ago, when I thought being a mom had to look a certain way, I had to drop those stories to give myself the permission to find and be who I am now. Because it was like, oh no, mom just is like at home, takes care of her kids all day. You know, I wouldn't have done anything else. I had to drop those stories. And the first time I even went and um, traveled in New Zealand, I got a nanny for the first time and was like, cool, I get to go teach my kids that when I live my passion, they're also worthy of living theirs. So see, all you're really doing when you see it for what it is, is you're supporting them in discovering who they are and expressing it fully and being being that love, acceptance, and support system for them. So, but, but I want you to now talking about all of this, my point of sharing that with you was to say that, you know, hear how um, my kids would have never discovered that about themselves or had these lessons if I tried to control. If you're trying to say it has to look this way, whoa, interesting, like that's controlling me. Obviously that thought and idea. So these were, it was interesting to hear these from Gavin and you think about these. He says, number one, listen. I said, what, what should parents know about their kids? Um, and, and I remember Skylar saying this also at my goddess retreat, like two years ago when they got interviewed by all my girls, I, I it was either Skylar or Gavin, but they said, what's the number one thing that, that we should know? And one, they, one of them had said, listen to your kids. I think it was Skylar. He's like, listen to your kids. So we have date nights where I get to hear everything that's going on. And it's just like being in open space where I could just listen and hear what's going on. And I remember when Gavin first had this draw and I said, babes, I'm like, if that's where you really feel called to go, you want to go be with Skylar and you want to learn those things and be in that environment. I said, I can only support you. And he was like, I remember him being taken back and he was like, thanks mom. He was like, thank you. And he said, thank you to me probably five times in like within 24 hours. He kept coming back to me. He was like, I just thank you. Thank you for listening to me. It brings so much value to a child when you allow them to be heard and you allow their opinion to matter. And so he, he'd repeated some of the same things over and over again, where it was like, he's like, ask questions and get curious. You know, get curious with me, talk calmly, respect what I have to say in here. Um, it's um, allow me to have my choice and be open, respond versus react. Don't tell someone how they feel or what they know. Um, and then he said, just make a specific request and then respect my request. <laughs> Um, he also said, be inclusive. So not separate child from adults, right? Like, and if you see pictures of all the stuff that we do, my kids are, I mean, they travel to different countries with me. They come into my retreats. Um, they're here hanging out with friends. Like we hear them, we see them, they have a voice, they have a place. They're not like, oh, it's, you know, kids go here. I mean, we definitely have like, I have quality date night with myself and with my love. And, and we have like, this is what supports us, but it's not you're not important. And I remember when I was um, 15 years old, my dad passed away and my mom started, my mom like disappeared. And then she just, you know, she was so scared of being alone, her scared little girl, I see it all for what it is now. She was desperate to find a man so that she wouldn't be alone. And I remember her um, um, buying, they bought like nice yummy food for them and had certain things. She's like, oh no, 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 that's for, that's for my date. That's for this. And I remember feeling so like you picked that over your child. And so I can understand that context where it's like, you know, not allowing them to be seen and heard as a being and being a part of things and giving options and choices. And this is an example, guys, of like, um, um, Dallas, is that you? <laughs> Come here. <laughs> I was just going to share an example about Dallas and then I hear him over there playing Kandala as the sunset's going down. You guys, I'm almost finished here, but check that out. I'm so glad I could share that with you too. Hi, babes. I heard the Kandala. Come here. I was just going to share, no, you're good, because I actually was just going to share this example, and you're, this would be great for you to drop in, because um, as Dallas and I had Sky and Gavin, you want to share this with me? Had Sky and Gavin. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> How's his name? And that Sky. I know, right? It's perfect. Yeah. Um, we were going to, so we were thinking of something to do, and, yeah. and, and Dallas had suggested us going to Coronado, yeah. where we could ice skate on the beach. And so again, we always go, hey guys, this is like, what do we want to create? What do we all want to create? And it's always like, we all have a voice. We all have a choice, even when we watch movies, right? Yes. It's like, what will work for all of us? <laughs> and it takes a few, before, by the way. yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it 
<laughs> it's like, no, we're watching this. Good. And I'm like, excuse yeah. me. Right. No one asked me <laughs> totally. what I would prefer as well. Totally, and I am totally. just as valuable as yeah. everyone else here. And see, it starts with that because I remember doing that even with my well, kids with, Gavin too, yeah. with music. Yeah. I was like, hey, you had a turn. Cool. It's my turn. And see, mm. I taught them that we all have a value. Mm. So um, when we when he, we had suggested going to do this and they were like, mm, no, it doesn't sound fun. And you had said you had said kind of like, well, where do you play that parent role where you're like, you yeah. want to share that? Well, well, because they don't know what they don't know. Right. So, <laughs> so there's, there's a feeling that like th there's a thought that comes up for me anyway, that once they get there, they'll enjoy it and appreciate it for what it is. Mm -hmm. And they don't th dark. yeah, they don't know mm -hmm. that they're that they're missing out. They're they're, they're making some you know, the judgment about the, f yeah. the fun that they will or will not have. Yeah. And, s and then I recognized, well, now I recognize yeah. that it was me thinking that I knew better for what, you know, mm -hmm. like they, they may still and get there and say, have a horrible time. And I was going to say, or do time. they not know, right? <laughs> like right. he was realizing, so we went on our own date yeah. night the other night. He took me to Hotel Coronado to, you know, to where the ice skating rink is and whatnot. Mm -hmm. And he's like, see, and I was like, yeah, I bet. You know, there's a chance Gavin and Sky could have come and be like, "This is cool." And he said, also, he remembered like doing this as a kid and be yeah. like, "I could have gotten on this ice skate rink, yeah. instantly fell on my ass, was like, I'm done, totally. I'm going home." And yeah. they could have also been like, "Eh, this isn't our scene." Totally. Again, so his like his idea was, uh, you know, maybe not necessarily getting to be a parent was like, "Wait, how do we? How do you enforce in a way like parent them to be like, you got to try this and experience this to to know what this is?" Yeah. And and to have some sense, but because, but because it's like. They, you know, they're making a decision, but they've never experienced it. Yeah. So it's like maybe you get them there and they have an amazing yeah, time. Yeah, but this they're is the like, thing. Oh, this was this great. is what I learned. I but remember. Did I? Like, I remember sharing. Way, I remember sharing with you. I think this was with <coughs> Gavin. He's an empath. He does not like fast, speedy things. We even went to Disneyland with his school, and he was done by one o'clock. My old self would have been like, oh, no, no, we paid the money to come to Disneyland. We took the time to come to Disneyland. Let's just be. And it was like, cool, baby, you're done. Like, that's your feel. Because I know he can only take up so much energy. Mm. And. Um, when he was little, I thought I knew better. Like mm -hmm. we went to Lagoon, which was this amusement park near our house. Mm -hmm. And I remember those, those rides that are like the, the tilt a wheel thing. Yeah. And they're so fucking fun. We are sky and, um, we laugh our asses off. Right. So I remember I convinced Gavin, I'm like, babes, I promise if you try it, you're going to, I I am swear you're going to love it. <laughs> you're going to think it's so fun. I, you know, I just for sure thought once he tried it, yeah. he would love it. Sure. And I remember we're on the spinny wheel thing. The guy that I was with and Skyler are laughing, and I'm like, and, and Gavin's, rah, 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 the whole time. And I'm just like, I just felt so horrible. I couldn't stop the ride. I couldn't. We get off, and Gavin goes, I told you, I told you, I told you so. I don't like those things. And I was like, yeah. oh. I he felt, knows, he, knows what he, he knew himself. Well, yeah, so it, and so uh, I'll let you keep sharing, but it, it does bring up something interesting because I know, like, for me, you know, sometimes you get a sense of something and you do yeah. and you do it, and then all of a mm -hmm. sudden you have a new you have a new yeah. experience. And something new is possible that you didn't know was possible. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yet, where that's usually coming from is the judgment that you exactly. Know better, so, right, and this is really and this is where I so. say it's it's a fine line as in being a parent <laughs> as to where you you get curious with them, and you know, like we know, you know, they didn't like salmon. Now, then once they tried some, they're like, we love salmon, can we have salmon? And so it's like, see, when you try things, you might discover if you like them or not. What what do you want to experience? Yeah. What would be possible? And and then we honor the decision. So we were like, I cool. The, the biggest challenge now for mm -hmm. me has been like around food and having, you know, and I, I'm sure you share, I don't know if you have shared about that, but it's like, bit. how do you get them to eat their vegetables if they yeah. don't want to? See, but again, <laughs> and, and, and this would be, like as a child, I, t I said as they were little, you know, we always had like, cool, we always pick a vegetable, we pick a thing, and I just told them what was what was good for their bodies. And they would they would literally be like, I want broccoli and I want this and et cetera. And as I got older and realized, even for us to say, your body needs this, we're creating a story. Sure. You have to eat this way to, to have this, we, you know, we create the, the parameters and the hologram the illusions of that when I know that our cellular structure we design mm. like we physically design. So what would be more important is to them to feel love and accepted, not like, well, you didn't eat your vegetables. I'm not happy with right, you. Exactly. But to be again, I, and I was sharing with them is that we share information. Like, it, you know, our bodies require these things or we can use these things to help our bodies. Mm -hmm. So we get it. We get to have a choice and we know that we're always in choice. And Gavin, I see how he's always like, mm, no, that'll make me feel sick. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, we, we can have those choices. So if you guys have any other questions, you might even have one for Dallas here as he's gotten to. Uh, they're just right here. Yeah. I was just gonna yeah. yeah. Oh, I, I'm, I'm sure I've gone off for a long time, but I, I hope that that gave you guys 
you know, some understanding of how to continue now to grow through your own. Again, you see where your stories are. That's why kids are the greatest yeah, mastery. Great, great learning for me, for sure. Yeah, right? <laughs> totally. And how to, how to get calm, how to get curious, mm -hmm. how to ask questions, how to do all those things so that you can have, you know, an experience with them of being epic. Mm -hmm. um, thank you. Mwah. Thanks for sharing. You know, we can dumb it up. Cool. Yeah. And so the, and it, it's going to allow you to find out where you're blocking yourself. And um, so when we just go back to these principles, um, you know, of, of getting curious, getting soft, and that's where you learn to not react, but to just breathe and lean into it and get curious about the whole thing and see where, where and, and uh, this is what I would love to end on, is that the infinite possibilities exist within the nothingness. So when it's like, instead of having a story of how it has to be, see, we, we do this to ourselves, we're like, we gotta, we gotta go, it's, we, I'm gonna make that thing, I'm gonna create that, and you intend something, and so you think it has to be that way, what you're doing is you're kind of putting blinders on and you're only seeing one way. When we let go of that, there's infinite possibilities. So by even letting go of my kids now and my magical manifestation match and all these things, I find new ways of being a greater mom. I'll find new, new discoveries about myself and the things that I get to share that I wouldn't have the opportunity to maybe discover if I was still on a certain path with them and experiencing it in a certain way. So do you see why it's all perfect? why there's infinite possibilities in the nothingness, meaning like in the space of just open love, support, and acceptance, you give them infinite possibilities. And I want to share one thing that my, my friend had said to me. She said when she moved, it was Katarina, my good friend, she said when she left Russia at 16, or she, not necessarily Russia, but left home at 16, and she said she now looks back and one of the greatest gifts her mom ever gave her was trusting her to leave. And she said, Marcy, you just simply trust your, your boys as divine beings, that you've given them everything that you're meant to give them, and... In, in this way and that you trust their path you trust where they're going and I was like that means so much to me because I'm like yes that's exactly it I trust them to trust themselves to know themselves and to discover themselves and I can trust that it's all for them it's all for me and when we allow that that beautiful divinity to be there that's that's the gift that we have in front of us to create even more epic divine relationships so I would love to know if you guys have any other specific questions I was glad we got to dive into this and just because this is such a gift for um, having that experience with our kids is to create greater relationships and to end this cycle of domestication and be able to literally um, to rise our humanity, to rise all of our experience and, and what a beautiful relationship you have with them when you choose to now um, operate in these ways of curiosity and respect and exploring and whatnot. So I love you guys so much. I'm going to go see what my Gavin, Gavin Bates is, is, is doing and uh, enjoy the rest of the sunset. You guys have an amazing, wonderful night. Love you.